change of we're going to flatten the organization, trust and empower. We're going to change the air mission commander plan. Four types of people. The willing and able, the willing and unable, the unwilling and able, and the unwilling and unable. Let's quickly run through these. The willing and able. I came back and said, I want to make some changes. These people said, what do you want me to do? I'm ready. Let's go. Whatever you need to do. You have those people in your organization. All right, I understand. We've got to change our quarterly objectives because the environment's changed. What do you need me to do? But they're also able. They're talented. They're capable. Hey, we've got three new projects. We're understaffed. I need you to take fewer people and go do this road project. I got it, man. Here's what I need. Give it to me. I'll run with it. That's those people. Now, those people fall into two categories, generally. Any of you bird hunt? Any of you bird hunted? Anybody? Okay, I've got some bird hunters. Well, I grew up bird hunting, and I had two good dogs. They were both good dogs. They, they pointed birds well, okay? But they were very different personalities. I would go to the field, open the dog box. One of those dogs would jump out, go look for a covey of birds, point the birds. I would walk up, kick them up, shoot a bird. It would go retrieve it, bring it back, give it to me, and take off to hunt singles all day long. I never had to say a thing to that dog. I never had to pat it on the head, nothing. Because that dog hunted and pointed birds for the sheer satisfaction of doing a good job. You've got those people in your organization. That other dog, if I didn't give it half of my sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit, it wouldn't even get out of the truck. It wouldn't. <laughs> Sit there and wait on me. Once I fed it, bam, out. Go point some birds. And when it brought a bird back to me, I, oh, baby, I love you. You're doing good. I'm so proud to have you on my team. Oh, you're doing a good job. Thank you for everything you do. And, man, he'd keep pointing birds. You've got them on your team, too. You do. Some of them, boy, you better be patting them on the back. Look, some leaders think they ought to conform to me. Successful, effective leaders understand that some people just need a little, hey, thanks for what you're doing. And some people need patted on the back and a sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit. All right? If you want to maximize the potential of everyone in your organization, you've got to know your people and know what motivates them. All of them. And they're different. They're different. We all are. Come on. We're all different. But we want our organizations to be operating at their maximum potential. And that means getting the most out of everybody. Let's talk about the willing and unable real quick. Okay, football analogy here. You're in a football game. You're down a touchdown in the fourth quarter. The other team has the ball making a drive, and your middle linebacker has missed three tackles in a row right up the gut. You've got that old boy standing beside the coach going, put me in, coach, put me in. I'll make that tackle. And you're going, if God entered your body, you couldn't make that tackle. <laughs> But I love you. <laughs> All right. You've got them too. Hey, I had several of these. They were motivated. They were willing. They wanted to contribute. But they were never going to shoot 70% from the free throw line. They just weren't. They didn't have the natural ability. So the question with them is, are they in the right seat on the bus? Are they doing the right things for your organization? It's okay. I like those people, okay? It's okay to have a few of them. Now, you don't need to collect them, but a few of them on the team is good. On innovation and initiative here. And what I want you to understand is you will not have innovation and initiative in your organization if you don't have trust and empowerment. You will not have it. If people don't feel safe to share ideas and throw their ideas on the table, they will not offer them up. They won't do it. You never know what you're going to find out when you go out there and get to know these people. I, uh, I was in Afghanistan one night, woke, about, woke up about 3 o'clock in the morning, had to use the latrine, the restroom, and um, I put my Petzl headlamp on because at night I didn't go anywhere without that headlamp. I'm not scared to fight the Taliban, but I don't like snakes. And there's a lot of snakes in Afghanistan, like that one we found in the toilet. Yeah. Buddy, if that don't get your attention, you sit down on him. <laughs> Whew, of all the places to get bit. <laughs> so anyway, I walk in the bathroom 2 o'clock in the morning, open the door, and two fellows are standing there, and I scared them to death. And I look over, 
And one was this big, burly guy. Look, he would make a grizzly bear envious. He had hair from the top of his head to the heels of his feet. Looked like a rug laying across his back. He didn't have anything but a pair of flip-flops and shorts on, and he was bent over the sink. The other fellow standing behind him had flip-flops, T-shirt, and a razor in his hand. And I said, what are you boys doing? And you could tell, man, they were like, oh, Lord, of all people to walk in, we thought 2 o'clock in the morning was safe. So the old boy, this big burly boy, the one being shaven, I guess he felt compelled to answer, and he turned to me, and with this humble voice, he said, Sir, I got all this hair on my neck, and it gets caught up in my dog tag chain and pulls it, and it hurts, but I can't reach back there to shave it, so my buddy here is shaving my neck for me. And I looked at him, and old skinny boy goes, What are you going to do? He needed help. I'm here to help. <laughs> right? I said, whatever. I used the bathroom, went back. I laid for an hour thinking, what a quintessential soldier moment. Most grown men can't imagine having to ask their buddy to do something so intimate. But that's what I love about our soldiers. That's what I loved about getting to know our workforce, knowing about their lives and hearing their stories.